So for everyone that's watching, I have Elliot from Image Design Custom here. Uh, Elliot, I want you to kind of introduce yourself, um, your role, and then kind of go into uh, talking about the company and what you guys do for people that aren't really familiar with your work. Okay, so I'm Elliot. Uh, I'm the brand manager at Image Design Custom. We are a leading paint company based in the UK. We specialize in custom paint. So we do everything from helmets to motorcycles to surfboards. I mean, generally speaking, if it can be painted, we pretty much can paint it. Uh, we work with the likes of Red Bull, with Monster, with Mock Off, um, you know, some of the world's leading helmets that you see out there on Pro Riders. You know, a lot of the time they do go through us. Uh, we work with the likes of, say, the Athertons, Danny McCaskey skill um you know all the way through to mxgp british Superbikes. i mean there, there's a lot of um you know dexterity to what we do as a brand uh yeah and then uh, we collaborated with marin bikes basically just you know with the world as it is at the moment everybody's in lockdown i think we're all getting pretty bummed out about life as a whole so um we teamed up with marin bikes to come up with kind of a you know original concept effectively just to give someone the opportunity to have their, their dream bike effectively, you know, cause um, a lot of what we do at images I custom is very much a sense of, you know, we bring people's dreams to life. Um, you know, we do a lot of stuff that's really channeling people's inner passions. So, you know, to give people an opportunity, I think during this tough times to get people stoked on something, we uh, basically just put a coloring book together, sent it out to the world. We had, I think it was something crazy like, two and a half thousand entries or something like that and obviously trying to trawl through instagram to see right. various designs and things like that um you know it was tough but we sort of narrowed it down it went up to a couple of marine pro riders mark matthews and matt jones so those guys sat down um, they discuss what they like, what they didn't like you know we threw a lot of um, opinions into the pot but ultimately it was down to Matt and Mark to decide, and I believe the the winning design was actually decided by rock paper scissors. Which... Yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, an interesting one for us. I mean, I've only been with Image Design Custom um, since the beginning of the year. I was previously at Mock Off um, as the athlete manager there for just over four years. Um, so yeah, it was something new, I think, for Image Design Custom. You know, they obviously saw a lot of kind of potential, I think, from a marketing aspect. And that's what, where I've uh, predominantly stepped into. So, you know, just looking to amplify what Image Design Custom, you know, can offer as a brand. Um, and opportunities such as the campaign is like the dream we're in that we did is obviously new territory for, for those guys. But it's, you know, it's proven it's worth tenfold, I think. It's given us great visibility as a brand. We've been able to give back to guys like yourself with something, you know, that's a complete kind of one-off, which is really cool for us. Uh, yeah, I think the whole thing as a whole was was, was pretty cool and there was a lot of people got stoked off of it for sure yeah was, i mean yeah i mean i can't thank you guys enough for dedicating your time and your efforts and your resources into uh something like this like obviously i am beyond stoked and i can't wait to see the bike um and i think like kind of going back just to talk about what you guys do and i think a lot of people see those helmets out in the wild they see them on the pro riders but I think there were some that I saw too, as I started, like, I just got lost in your Instagram account, just going through and, and looking at all the, the photos. I'm like, oh, they did that helmet or they did that helmet. So uh, it's pretty cool to see like how you guys are in, in something that I'm so passionate about too, but also kind of see how you guys apply that to other sports and other interests too. Like I was like, uh, the Harley Davidson stuff that you guys just did all the motorcycles anything like yeah, that. Yeah, the FXDR project was pretty insane. So that's, you know, a little bit away from the whole Red Bull athletes, pro riders, kind of extreme sports, so to speak. Um, a lot of the stuff that we do is down to custom motorcycles and we got commissioned by Harley Davidson UK to take their standard FXDR model, um, which is 114 cubic centimeters <laughs> uh, engine. I mean, this is like the limitation of my motorcycle knowledge. Um, yeah. But effectively, we just we did 30 complete limited edition um, reruns of this bike. And I think it's been released for a week, something like that. And they've already sold through like half the fleet. So, yeah, you know, we do a lot of different stuff as a brand. Um, and I think that's really what we're trying to do now is to just, you know, get ourselves out there to the world to really scream and shout about all the, the cool stuff that we do at Image Design Custom. And, you know, I'm very much the same as you as well. You know, I'm a, I'm a nerdy little kind of mountain bike kid at heart. And I think... Yeah. To be able to be dealing with people that you know you kind of looked up to i think uh, a lot of the times and then for someone like me to shift into this role is yeah it's kind of like a bit of a pipe dream i guess at times but yeah it's uh fun days for sure that's awesome so you know like 
everyone in the world is dealing with COVID and the repercussions of that. And you guys in the UK were probably on like stricter lockdown measures than we were here in the States. Um, so what has that been like for you guys? And kind of now you're like looking to ramp back up and getting back into the shop. Like, what was that like for you guys to, to kind of go through that, that pretty strict lockdown? Yeah, it's so, I mean, obviously we, we've always got the safety of, of our team and our customers and everybody in mind. Um, so we made the decision to close up the workshop, I believe, back at the end of March, which is obviously always a tough thing for us to do because everything that we do is done out of that workshop. So, yeah. um, you know, with the circumstances as they were, I mean, we, we just had to sort of make the decision which we felt was best for our brand. Um, but we've since bounced back. The workshop's now open. We've got you know, uh, social restrictions in place. So the guys are obviously keeping themselves safe, making sure, you know, plenty of disinfecting and washing hands and stuff like that. I mean, the, the nature of the, a lot of the time the guys are wearing masks anyway, which is obviously right. um, a good thing. Um, with the whole race seasons at the moment, you know, being either postponed or canceled, it's um, just kind of waiting things to crank back up, I think, again. But obviously as, as a brand, we, we can always make sure there's stuff going out the door, like the shelves for us are relatively full at the moment. Um, but obviously you always want to make sure that you're keeping yourselves on the front foot. So despite the restrictions, there was obviously certain, you know, hardship that I think inevitably we had to go through as the majority of the people have probably gone through themselves. I think, you know, there's a, been a lot of um, sim similar sentiments, um, you know, in the UK, I think, you know, and overseas as well, that everybody is very much in the same boat with this situation. But yeah, it's super positive now for us, I think, to be kind of bouncing back. And, you know, we've got sunshine here in the UK at the moment. And yeah, things are looking slightly positive compared to yeah the last couple of months. Yeah, for sure. Um, and again, like, I really appreciate you guys. You know, you probably have all these things of backlog of of paying customers and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to squeeze that into. And um, so kind of just, I'm like, I'm a very technical person. I, I have like an engineering background um, before I got into video. So I always love the process of like how things happen in, in, you know, paint is something I've never really got into. Like my the extent of my paint skills are like spray paint and like painting my house. Um, so like, what is the typical paint process for you guys when you, you mock up a design, like from concept to completion? And um, I like to hear too, like kind of like some of the difficulties or intricacies of like what goes into that, that m people might not realize that goes on behind the scenes. Well, I mean, from the initial point, we, we do a lot of digital mock-ups. So we use uh, Adobe Illustrator for the bulk of that stuff because we can actually transfer a lot of the digital files directly onto helmets. Um, it also means you can kind of play around with different aesthetics and you know, really get a sense of actually bringing someone's um, vision to life because that's always the hardest part, I think, is you know, with anyone, however many ideas that you've got, trying to get something out of your brain and kind of onto paper is always quite tough. So the initial point yeah. for us is always going to be looking at digital digital mock-ups um, we'll do that across the range so if that's for just someone that's coming off the street right up to the pro end riders we basically offer the same level of service across the board um, and that's one thing I think you know we're, we're always pretty proud of is the fact that there's a meticulous level of detail to every single process that we go through so we're quite like well I'd say we're lucky I mean you know we've got a very a lot of very very highly talented guys from the digital side of stuff to the uh, paint production side of things um, and once we've kind of taken the, the concepts themselves, everything moves on through preparation. And again, this is sometimes the most critical part, really. Um, there's a lot of sanding that goes into it, masking, just to you know ensure that effectively how it looked when it came off the factory floor, we can replicate that when we get to the end process of what we're doing. Because you know that's ultimately what we're trying to do is to you know take that factory fresh finish and just give someone a little bit of personalization to it in a way. Um, so there's a lot that really goes into the preparation side of stuff. Like I say, you know, if certain soft touch finishes or gloss finishes on a stock helmet, all of that needs to be taken back. Um, with bike frames, as an example, in some instances, we'll go all the way back to bare metal. Uh, obviously, always whilst ensuring that there's the, you know, the structure of the bikes and the helmets and everything is, is considered because at the end of the day, especially with a helmet, you know, you're sticking your brain inside of that. You want to make sure it works when it comes to the end of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, once we get through that point, then obviously we start to work through the detail side of things. So that can be anything from just the base color. A lot of the times the guys will use primer. Obviously for anybody that's done painting before, primer just gives you that kind of base that everything adheres to really. Um, so regardless of what it is, you'll generally find that the guys will go through that priming phase. Um, single colors are obviously pretty easy. That's just a case of going over the entire thing. Um, 
will there'll always be consideration towards things like decals or logos or any intricacies to the designs but from the very base end if it's just literally a single color we can obviously go through that process build the layers up um, once it's painted up to the desired finish so whether that's matte or gloss we'll go back through a finishing process again so that'll either be um, for a matte finish obviously taking it back so we get a nice clean matte finish or if it's for gloss we'll go in with a polish and actually really bring that that gloss shine out so you know, once you get to that point for a very simple helmet, you could obviously say there is quite a few hours uh, involved. Now, when we get up to the more sort of top end designs, the very complex stuff, that's when it really starts to get into a little bit of work. Um, I can actually give you an example as well. If you give me literally two seconds, I've got a helmet yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Go as an example. So you said you scrolled through the Instagram. Have you seen the Stranger Things helmet? I don't think I have. So Stranger Things, obviously the famous. Big fan. Yeah. So this is our Stranger Things helmet. I don't even really see. That is. So this insane. is basically like the top end of intricacy. So you've got yeah. multiple layers built into it. There's multiple colors built into it. So for every single layer that you see and every difference in color that you see, there's going to be a process of masking, painting, taking the masking away, remasking, and then going on to the next color again. So for something like this, this is really right up at the top end. Um, this was, yeah, something that I ended up going for myself thinking, oh, I'm going to get a nice real kick-ass helmet. And it's not until you get it into your hand that you're like, I'm probably never going to wear this. I would not <laughs> want to wear that. So half the thing is as well, like my, see on the back there, we've got Master Squid in the Stranger Things font. Man. So my Amazing. nickname is the Master Squid for anyone that knows mountain bikers. You know, squids are not very good at riding bikes. Well, I'm <laughs> the best at not riding bikes. <laughs> um, I've got a good love affair with trees, the ground generally falling off the thing so yeah i think when you crash as much as i do and you've got a beautiful helmet such as that it's uh yeah i think it's probably going to be one that sits on the shelf for a while but um, i mean as far as obviously the complexity i mean there's a lot that goes into that that's right up at the top end and there are hours and hours and hours worked into that and there's little parts that you don't really see to it either you know the way that the all the liat logos are masked in there as well i mean yeah little bits of details under the peak like you've got all the kids on there i mean you know even down to just the the glow of the eye on the demigorgon it's just tiny little things that for the most part you probably won't notice but we'll always go to just those kind of little tweaks um to make sure that we can put absolutely everything that we can into a helmet so you know, even from the base end, like it's not to say that that has deserved more attention. You know, you won't necessarily say that a plain black helmet, as an example, compared to that doesn't necessarily have the same amount put into it. I think the key detail is the fact that we'll always have that same standard that we adhere to. So even if it's a longer process with something that's a little bit more complex, there's always that point of ensuring that everything is always at a standard and is either to that or beyond that. That's amazing. How long would like, what's like your guess on how long that helmet took from like start to finish? So, well, that's the thing. I mean, when it comes to the marketing and the brand side of stuff, the guys give me cool things to talk about. And that's, you know, my forte. Yeah. Even for me, like trying to learn the processes and just watching the guys from, you know, day in, day out. I mean, the Marin frame as an example, you know, to, to actually follow the painters around for a day, it's crazy to see how, how the process works. And, I bet. you know, even just down to being able to replicate colors and things like that. I mean, you know, you've got like, 0.2 grams of like white mixed with 0.7 of black and this that and the other but you add all of those things together and you can get exactly the same paint color and over and over and over and over again and i mean when you get down to such meticulous detail on these things you can see where that you know that, yeah. that high quality comes from um and you know there's a lot of great painters out there as well i mean I mean, by no means are kind of we the top of the pile. I mean, you've got guys like AP Designs, you've got Airtrix that you know do some absolutely phenomenal work. And I think for us, it's knowing that we you know, we can be credible against such great companies like Airtrix and AP. Um, Troy Lee Designs has obviously you know always been top of the pile. I think Troy basically just plowed the path that everybody else has followed, but. I think to have that reputation that we do as a brand now to have, you know, our work being paraded on 
the world's elite scene when you see a you know pro helmet at the likes of Red Bull Rampage and you know, I really feel that there's there's a lot of pride that goes into it and that's just where it comes from it's the passion it's the drive and the desire that I think encompasses what we do as a brand and you know we can really channel that from our customers and regardless of like I say how long goes into each piece of work I think there's always a sense of you know we want to be proud ourselves of what's going out the door with every single piece of work that we do. No, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I encourage everyone that's that's watching this now to go check out your Instagram account. We'll talk about where we can find that at the end. But it's just, uh, it's mind blowing to see what you guys can do with paint. And yeah, I'm in awe of what. Yeah, like some of the effects. I mean, um, uh, Matt Jones's most recent helmet, uh, his Red Bull helmet, because so he's on 100% helmets this year. Um, I think it was the Altec or it may have been the aircraft, but they basically did a wood effect, but painted with a paintbrush. And even now I look at the photos, I look at the process and everything. And I'm like, it's devilry. Like there is yeah. nothing short of, it is just, yeah. Soldier souls are the devil to be able to create stuff like that. But you know, it is such a, yeah. To see what you can create with stuff. That's awesome. So speaking of like painting and, and the bikes and stuff, I know, with all the entries that were in the Marin contest, there was like tons. There was a couple that I thought were like awesome. There was like the pizza bike and there was another one. Yeah, the pizza bike um, I think is one of my favorites. Yeah, like so like obviously compared to the stuff that is that you guys do, um, as far as like complexity goes, probably the design I have probably is kind of a little more cleaner, a little more simpler, but kind of talk about the process of like what it was like to paint that bike. So do you guys have to like strip that down? and prep it like what kind of happened in that process yeah so like we say we you know with bike frames especially a lot of the time uh, it will just be factory paint it really depends on the company sometimes they they will have considered paint jobs when they come in but for the most part we take everything back as far as we can um, we did a santa cruz bronson with g milner for a dream build which was like a porsche inspired one. oh that and thing again, was sick like, yeah i mean the, the chrome deck was on that thing it was like crazy um but the main thing for us is, you know, if you can start with the absolute bare minimum when you're painting, it's obviously going to be a little bit better for you. But also there's the consideration towards weight on bikes nowadays. Um, like we did the San Quentin for Matt Jones, like the Galaxy theme one, which was like the most bling thing you've ever seen. Um, and there's a lot of instances, I think, where the guys can actually create uh, paint jobs to full completion and still, you know, retain a lot of that factory fresh um you know finish to it and in some instances they can actually take the weight down from the factory finish so i think wow. on one of my bikes it was you know six grams lighter after we would finished it than it was when it came in so it's, there's no sort no bad reputation towards marine or anything but i think it's just another point to show you know what we can achieve so with your one for example you know there's a lot of things that people can look at the the, the more simple designs and, and kind of say well you know it may be a bit more basic um but with the angular design to yours it's quite tough to be able to get that sense of symmetry through the design you know the the cuts and things like that the way that you had it laid out once you've got the swing arm in place you obviously need to get the swing arm aligned then align the frame up you have to find when your masking points are so to kind of watch uh, jack car painter go through that process was really interesting for me because it's you know a lot of it can be down through experience just because of the nature of what you're doing but then a lot of the time it's just trial and error i mean you need to apply the masking down see how it looks you know it's the same thing of um remember what the sort of the, the quote is what is it measure twice cut once or something like that so it's exactly. kind of the same I think, I think with what the guys are doing is to to ensure that everything aligns so that if we have sent a digital mock-up to someone that we can literally say right here is the digital mock-up here is the real thing and there is literally no difference other than one is a digital file one is the real thing um so there's a few little aspects that we've added um to the bike as such so it's still going to look basically the same as how you designed it um, yeah. but obviously you know i think if we're giving you your dream bike there's always little bits that we can kind of work into it as well so i think i'd be excited to see once you've got this thing out of the box and uh see the yeah the finished frame no i'm really excited i think you sent me like that little when you guys were in the initial like mock-up stage and illustrator um of that and that got me like already super excited so uh i'm really pumped to see what you guys did with um with the paints and the finishes and yeah i can't wait to to have that to ride 
Yeah, it was interesting for me for sure to, to watch a bike go from, you know, out of the box, basically straight from the factory from Marin and then watching Jack go through the process of stripping down, masking. Like they've got this, uh, like the die cut machine that we use for basically super accurate masking and just kind of watch this thing like going away, cutting out logos and everything. I mean, you, you proper like nerd out if you're a kind of sort of techie guy. But yeah. It's, that combination, I think, of, you know, the modern day stuff with like the hands on side of things is that the technology will only get you so far. And then obviously it's the reliance on the, the year's worth of expertise of the bulk of our team to, to bring, you know, that digital um, file actually into a reality. No, it is awesome to see still that hands on, you know, craft that, that experience going into it. Cause like you said, like so much today is, I mean, even just look at like video and, and, and photos, you know, everything's gone digital. So it's made it a little bit more accessible, but also like, you know, easier to manipulate things in post as opposed to like the days of where you had actual film, you had to know how to properly set exposure, things like that. And you can't fix it after it's been developed. So it's cool to still see that handcraft in use today, which is awesome. Um, cool. So um, where can people find more about what you guys do? Like where's the, the best place they can, so depending on when the video goes out we do actually have a, uh, a new website coming soon uh, we've had a holding page for a little while so it's one of the big things we've been working on um really really excited to get that out to the world so that's going to be imagedesigncustom.co.uk uh, we do have a holding page there at the moment like i say you can sign up to the newsletter to find out about all the cool stuff that we do and um, there's social media links on there as well we're easy enough to find across facebook instagram uh, we do have a youtube channel as well if you want to see some cool stuff being painted painted uh, just find image design custom on youtube uh yeah i mean that's pretty much the the long and short of where you can find us and like i say i think once our website and everything is live from there on in we're gonna have some really exciting stuff coming up for us over the coming months oh, that's awesome cool yeah well I, um i won't take up any more time of yours i really appreciate chatting today but also what you guys are doing with the bike i know you guys you said you guys have video of the whole process so yeah i can't wait I, to I mean, see I, that too so I, c I could literally show you a picture of obviously said bike, but then that would just be teasing and you wouldn't get the same effect yeah, out. But like it I, would. Say, I, I really want to see, I really want to see it, but I know that. <laughs> it's kind of that of thing, is, you know, you could, you could probably give you like just enough, but it's kind of that whole thing. You're going to put your finger on a pie and having a little bit, and then you just need to have the whole slice. So yeah, I will, I will impatiently wait to unbox it. <laughs> So um, I think we're, the, the bike itself is basically fully painted now. So we're going to be looking to get uh, a little bit of filming done with the actual build of the bike before it goes out to you. So we'll have a little bit of content ourselves to go out. So hopefully at the same time, if for anyone watching this, you'll be seeing the Image Design Custom video at the same time, um, showcasing some of the stuff that obviously went into the paint of this. Uh, and then, yeah, hopefully some good reactions from Justin once he actually gets the thing. Oh, man. And I... I was on cloud nine for like a week when I found that I won, like my wife could, she's like, stop talking about, it. I'm like, but, but look at the bike, look what they do. Like she is. So I'm super excited. Is, you're you're going to need like 15 layers of Invisiframe and just, it'll that's be what like... I'm actually, <laughs> that's what I'm researching right now. It's like, what is the best way I can to like protect this? Cause I don't want to get like one scratch on it, but I want to ride it. So it's like, ah, so. It's yeah, kind of one of those. I mean, I'm the same with my helmet. I think my, my current helmet is fine. Like if I have a few more crashes in it and it's like, well, you know, it's, it's the whole thing of, you don't want to like get a piece of art if you can't fully enjoy it. And I think sometimes to just sort of have things sat there, like it's all well and good. Like it's really cool. But obviously if something's built for a purpose, I mean, to show wear and tear, I think is like, once you get that first little chip into it, you're kind of like, yeah, okay, let, let, let's go full ham and give this thing, you know, a bit more, energy and that'll be it like you'll, you'll have you know yeah. change black chips all over it you'll have like this is where i hit a tree and exactly you know it, it kind of becomes like the next part of the story in a way and obviously part of the story for what we do is always like i say you know bringing people's dreams and their visions and and channeling their passion into a physical thing and i think to be able to take parts of people's emotion and put that into something which is tangible and usable and can actually go out there and, you know, create a sense of enjoyment for someone, I think is, you know, a real kind of key importance to a lot of this stuff. And yeah, like I say, you'll get one little chip on it and you're like, right, you know, Whistler, sure. a line, just start throwing big booters on the thing. And yeah, every chip tells a story, as I say, it's the same with scars. 
Exactly. Cool. Well, uh, I look forward to seeing her in the flesh. Uh, again, thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, big, give a big thanks to the guys, the rest of the team out there that, that painted that. Um, yeah, so sweet. Cool. Absolute pleasure, man. I mean, we're all looking forward to seeing what you think of it when it comes through. And uh, like I say, yeah, we'll have plenty of stuff, I think, out to the world to, to show everybody what's gone into it. And obviously, you know, bringing this uh, dreamer in project to life. Awesome. Cool. All right. We'll be good. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Indeed, buddy. Well, great to chat. And obviously for anyone that's watching, uh, yeah, stay safe, wash your hands, you know, all the responsible stuff. Keep the rubber side down, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it depends who's riding the bike. I mean, yeah. I'm... Sweet. All right. Well, thank you, yeah. Elliot. Hey, no problems at all, Justin. You take care, buddy. Have a good one.